All right, let's watch some Avatar. But honey, we have Avatar at home. Bro, I love Avatar. It's hands down one of my favorite shows. The characters are charming, the world is mesmerizing, and the jokes are iconic. And in lieu of the new live action series coming out, I thought it'd be fun to revisit M. Night Shyamalan's absolute mess of a film, The Last Airbender. I think I might regret this. So right off the bat, we're hit with the iconic story we all know and love. But instead of a sick opening sequence, they gave us a Star Wars text crawl. But hey, at least it tells us what happened to the Avatar. The Avatar was What? What the fuck? We actually start off with Katara bending some water in a cool little ball, and she accidentally loses control and drops it on Sokka's head because she's just a little silly goose. But it's fine, he seems to shake it off. I'm the sorry. The fuck I'm you sorry, say I'm to sorry. me, you little I'm shit? Sorry. So then Katara dumps a bunch of exposition on us. You know, they live in the Southern Water Tribe, which was once a big city, but since deteriorated, their dad went off to war with all the men and their mom died. You know, classic Avatar stuff. Oh, and food's scarce, so they're out hunting for a tiger seal. Tiger seal. Are you sure? Huh. I guess this camping trip's gonna be a bust. Oh wait, what's that? Tiger seal. Katara, don't go near it. You know, Sokka, that's good thinking. I think it's best that we wipe our hands of this whole situation and walk home like nothing ever happened. So our two compelling protagonists walk up to get a good look at what's inside of this thing. But all they find is Caillou and one of those things from where the wild things are. They try to ask the kid how he got there, but he's unresponsive. Oh, and Sokka gets absolutely wrecked. Back at the village, Katara peeps on the kid while he's getting dressed, and then he tells her why he was in the ice. Turns out, he ran away from home, got caught in a storm, and was forced underwater. He says he should probably head home. But before they could do anything else, company arrives. It's the Fire Nation, and they are not happy. And dude, Sokka looks like he's ready to throw down. Sokka. What the fuck? Sokka. Fucking alright, I guess. So we meet a season 1 Zuko with season 2 Zuko's hair. Oh, also he's Indian now. Zuko says he wants all the old people in the village, which is a bit of an odd request without context, but hey, <laughs> I'm not gonna judge what the Zuko's into, you know? <laughs> anyway, they find the boy and bring him out to Zuko. I'm taking you to my ship. If you don't come, I'll burn down this village. Yo, dude, the Zuko's got no idea. This kid's about to beat him up. I'll go with you. Shit. After this, Katara and Soka <laughs> feel pretty bad about their new friend getting taken prisoner and decide they should probably get him back. Sokka agrees with Katara, but how are they going to catch up to a ship that's going that fast? Meanwhile on the ship, the bald boy is introduced to Zuko's uncle, Iro. Yeah, that's really how they say it. He has a test for the boy and says that after the test, he'll be free to go. Sounds easy enough? Okay. At the same time, Sokka and Katara's grandma gives them a big old exposition dump. To sum it up, she basically says, Yo, that kid is for sure an airbender and probably the avatar, so y'all should help him out because he's kind of important. Also, the spirit world's a thing, so that's cool. Oh, as for the test, yeah, the boy can bend multiple elements, so he is the avatar. Well, wow. but right when Zuko thinks he's got him, this happens. Now Zuko's all pissed and the gang is on the run. And Sokka and Katara finally find out the boy's name. It's Aang. Aang flew it. Aang. 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 You know what, at this point, I give up on this movie getting any names right. Anyways, they go to his old home and everyone is hella dead, including Monk Gyatso, which was very much a father figure for Aang. Seeing all this, he gets pissed off, goes Super Saiyan, and sees a dragon. He decides they definitely need to go to the Northern Water Tribe because he's gotta learn waterbending and the journey truly begins. But first, these two gotta clear things up and figure out if Aang is really the Avatar. But how are they supposed to ask him something like that? So, are you the Avatar Aang? But before you can answer, they're ambushed and taken to an Earth Kingdom town that's been taken over by the Fire Nation. Everything seems lost until Ong steps up. My name is Ong. And I'm the Avatar. I 
fucking knew it! Then we get to see this spectacle, which, can I just say, how could M. Night see something this cool? And turn it into this. Also, apparently firebenders can't make their own fire in this universe, which honestly nerfs the shit out of that element. Like, I thought fire was pretty mid already, but this movie makes it trash, bro. It's a wonder the Fire Nation was able to beat the Aero Nomads at all. Eh, but I digress. Also, why do they shoot this scene so close? I feel like I'm watching the first Twilight. Skipping ahead a little bit, Aang gets kidnapped by Admiral Zhao, and he's a bad guy. Like, the kind of bad that not even edgy, old people love and Zuko likes. It seems like Aang is actually done for this time, but out of nowhere, Ozzy Osbourne appears and saves him. Although it turns out it's Zuko and not actually Ozzy Osbourne, so... A bit of a letdown if you ask me. After this epic adventure they've been on, the gang finally reaches the North Pole. Also, Zhao blows up Zuko's boat and kills Zuko, so... <laughs> rip. In the North Pole, they meet the royal family, and Sokka learns what a boner is. But enough fun and games, it's time for the big fight. The Fire Lord has sent a huge fleet of Fire Navy ships to destroy the North Pole, and the only thing that can save the waterbenders is some magical yin and yang moon koi fish. Yeah, this shit's getting real. So Aang goes into the spirit world to get some answers, but uh-oh, Zuko's here to take him. <laughs> but good thing Katara's here to defend him and save the day. Ah, but don't worry, Aang breaks out like literally five minutes later. But Katara is actually dead though. And what follows is what can only be described as the majority of this film's CGI budget. I mean, I could bore you with the details, but this part is more or less actually like the show. Zhao kills one of the koi fish, Moon turns red, Princess Yue sacrifices herself, Zhao gets clapped, and the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. But just when you think there's gonna be a minute to relax, Sokka and Katara say this. They want you to be their avatar off. We all do. And yeah, that's the movie. Oh wait, what's this? Sozin's Comet is returning in three years. You must stop the Avatar from mastering Earth and fire. You must give us the time to get to that day. Do you accept this unspeakably important task I'm putting in your hands? I do, Father. Honestly, this movie is way worse than I remember. I've been up in the air about this new show coming out, but at least I can rest assured knowing that it'll be better than this abomination. But I hope y'all enjoyed revisiting this movie with me. I mean, <laughs> there was just so much stuff that made me cringe, laugh, and scratch my head. Feel free to leave a comment on some of your favorite moments in the movie that I didn't cover in the video. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Well, I'm gonna go check out some bending scrolls so I can figure out what the hell this move is. Uh -oh.